Hello everybody, John Chua back here again with another video, and I'm here to give you my official review for Arrow Season 4, Episode 2, titled The Candidate. If you've not seen this episode, please go check it out, because this review may contain spoilers. But that being said, let's get right into The Candidate. Now obviously, this episode is obviously taking place right after the last one, you know, the ghosts are going crazy, Team the new and improved... Team Green Arrow is obviously trying their best to take them down. Damian Dark is out there, you know, scheming his little plans to try and take over Star City and try and bring in Hive and all that kind of crazy stuff. Uh, basically, the ghosts and Damian Dark are Hive, so we have to wait and see what happens with that. Overall, Oliver and I think the best part about this episode has to be Oliver and Thea's relationship. I think, and that's saying a lot because let me put it out there. I don't like Thea. I don't. I can't I can't deny that. I can't pretend. I can't. I freaking hate the character of Thea. I don't like her at all. I think she's a useless character and I feel like last season they just should have just left her dead. However, she really did a lot of cool things in this episode. I felt like like those sequences where she started to act up because of the effects of the Lazarus pick. I think we're really badass. I mean, granted, it only took fucking, what, six months for her to actually have any kind of effect? I'm just saying, I mean, like, usually it takes, like, a couple minutes for a character to go wacko, like, the second after coming out of the pit, but it only took her six months? I mean, like, it only took Jason Todd two seconds to go fucking wacko and just go fucking back to Gotham to kill freaking Batman, you know? But it took Thea like six months. Eh, what are you going to do? But at the end of the day, it was really cool to see her act up and go crazy uh, at Oliver and whatnot. That's kind of like the big dynamic of this episode, which is Thea going too far and Oliver trying to bring her back. Which I think was the best part of this episode. I mean, there's they, they had a real good, like, and I hate to say it because the last season I bitched about it so many times. But it had a very Batman feel in the sense of, like, Oliver is kind of like the Bruce Wayne Batman uh, in this situation, and Thea is kind of like taking the role of like the kind of Jason Todd esque, um, uh, kind of Damian Wayne kind of you know role in this situation where they have this relationship together where they're related, obviously, they're blood relation and they love each other, obviously. However, one character is so dark and, and twisted because of certain events that they take things a little too far and at some points it does become a little kind of off-putting for me at a certain point in this episode um but overall i think it was done pretty well i think the way they did thea was actually pretty badass which is saying a lot once again because i freaking don't like the character of thea i think she's a pointless character but she was done very well in that one scene where they fucking go at each other and start fighting where like I, I just how I love how that just develops. You know, it's just Oliver just trying to be like, here, come here. This is what you're doing. This is what you should be doing in battle. And then they just go at each other, just fucking battling, battling. They just button heads, kicking each other's asses. I love that that freaking moment. I love how team team uh, Green Arrow is just standing in the in the sideline, just like, what do we do? It's like, just let them fucking fight. They need to fucking. They've been at each other's throats. For a long time, they need to just go at each other for a couple minutes. Let's just fucking deal with this shit. Um, kind of odd it took this long to, to, to take, considering last week's episode. They were like, oh, I need you back. Now I hate you. It's like, God, your emotions are out of whack, but whatever. It's pretty interesting to see that scene in and of itself. Um, however, I did not like the resolution because, let's face it, this is reality uh, at a certain point. Um... In real, in a, in a realistic, and I hate to use that word, but in a realistic comic book setting, wouldn't Green Arrow just fire her? I'm just saying, this is the Green Arrow. This is not the Arrow. I know she, I know that's his sister and all, but she's reckless. She's not, you know, command. She's not commanding to your freaking your orders, and she's hurting people in a very negative way. So, I think it would just would have been a better move. And it would have been a much more greater side plot if, they, if you just had Oliver just fire her as Speedy and take her out of Team Green Arrow. I mean, granted, I know, you know, Oliver, does, you know, realizes this, that he needs all the help he can get for taking on Damian Dark. I understand that. But come on, you know, this sometimes some people are not right to be crime fighters. I mean, just look at the Robins. There's a reason why there's multiple Robins, because some of them are not good at their freaking job uh, and some of them leave. And some of them die, and that's, you know, one of the main reasons. So, I'm just saying, it's like, instead of, like, 
you hurt people tonight. So you know what? Instead of firing you, I'm going to send you to a vacational spa outside of the state. Come on, dude. Come on. I know it's your sister, but be a little bit more harsh than that. She doesn't have a mom and a dad. Fucking te I don't know. At the end of the day, still pretty badass. Just didn't like the resolution. Of course, we get this new character, the Danforth character coming in. She wants to decide to run for mayor in Star City. She feels inspired by Green Arrow. Um, it's a rival last week and all that kind of crazy cool stuff. However, it's all for naught. Damien Dark wants to continue doing his deeds in Star City without a mayor. So he tries to take her out using the help of the new villain for this season, which is Anarchy. Anarchy is coming to town. He's the, the main bad guy for this episode. And he's, you know, placed with the the mission of taking out the mayor. So there is no mayor, because, ironically enough, in Star City, lots of characters who run for mayor end up dying. It's a plot device that's been used way too many times, but it seems to work. But overall, Anarchy in this episode, I think he did a pretty decent job. I think the actor they got for the character of Anarchy was pretty badass. Um, I feel like they should have had him have a lot more to do in the show. I feel like the episode did a great job at, sh you know, featuring him. Showing his sadistic side, showing off how he's bent on, you know, wanting to please Damian Dark and wanting to be a villain and all that kind of crazy stuff. He has that, you know, he has those really good qualities. I just wish there was more to him. Uh, obviously, based off the cliffhanger in the end of the episode, he is still out there. And he is still, he's going to be a main bad guy for the rest of the season. The, the only real interesting thing that will come out from his character, which is, who is he really going to target next after he comes back? to Star City after he's healing from his wounds from taking on Team Green Arrow. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that happens. I uh, Like, is he going to go after Damian Dark? Is he going to go after Oliver? Let's see what happens. It's going to be very, very interesting overall. Uh, but, of course, on the sidelines, we have a whole bunch of very interesting topics. You know, you have Dignito talking about Hive. Uh, he, you know, is he, he has this conversation with Laurel where it's like, um, Hive does mean something because it was them who killed my brother for reasons unknown. So we have to see what happens with that. I really don't know where it's going to go. Is Dignito going to die? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I, I'm just saying we still don't know who's in that grave. So it could be Dignito. I'm, I'm just saying my, my three guesses as of right now is Felicity, Dignito, or Captain Lance, uh, which is, you know, has not been confirmed with anybody, but overall, we have to wait and see with those predictions. Uh, but at the end of the day, really cool stuff. I, I actually liked this episode. I think there was a lot of weird things that went down in this episode that I wasn't a big fan of. Once again, the Allicity stuff, I'm just not a big fan of. I just don't really care for that Allicity stuff. I mean, I'm just saying, they're back in the grind. They're freaking crime fighting. It's awesome. It's like, yeah, fucking Team Green Arrow. Let's fucking do this shit. But then they're like... It's time to come back home, lovey-dovey. It's like, come, get the fuck out of my face. I don't need to see this shit. I don't care. Felicity, really awesome stuff. Kudos to her. Two things I did not like about her character in this episode, but kudos to her for finally doing something outside of Team Green Arrow. She's fucking running Ray Palmer's um, technologies. She's the, you know, the CEO of the fucking place because Ray Palmer, before he died, ironically enough, well, technically shrunk, but um, in the context of the show, died. He signed off the company to her for uh, re who gives a sh who gives a shit reasons, um, but fuck it. She has the company. She has to deal with these problems over the company, uh, simultaneously dealing with the problems of Green Arrow. So it was really cool to see her have more to do outside of the Green Arrow stuff. But uh, yeah, there were just two things I was not a big fan of her character. Number one, I didn't really like that conversation she had with Oliver when um when they when she came back. And he came back after dealing with the whole speedy stuff. And he's just like, you know what? You know, we, you know, she's, she's kind of like angry with, with the fact. Maybe she's having second thoughts. And I just felt like, why is this a conversation that they're having? You wanted to come back. You can't just, you know, if you make the bed, you got to lay in it. You can't fucking go back and be like, I need a new mattress. No, fuck that shit. You have been helping out this team forever. And you've been doing it behind this guy's back and you wanted to come back i don't want to hear her character bitch and moan about like maybe it was a bad decision to come back this is too hard you i'm firing people oh wow that's what happens in a business you gotta fire people i know it's a lot of people and it's sad but it's freaking star city 
they're all gonna die eventually. I mean, like, once again, they're gonna have, like, another fucking hive impact where the, everyone's gonna die, so who gives a shit at the end of the day? But it's like, come on. You wanted to come back. You did not like suburbia. You wanted to stay... You wanted to come back home, and you wanted to, to take care of your team. You want to take care of your family, and you wanted to crime fight again. I don't want to hear those conversations ever again from these two characters. If they want to be lovey-dovey, go right ahead. But I don't want to hear conversations about, like, maybe it was a bad decision to come back. No, it was a, it was a right decision. I liked Oliver's response for once. I liked his response. I liked the fact that he was like, yes. I, we came back for a reason. We we came back because we wanted to. This is our decision. You know, I'm just saying. I just did not like that conversation that the two had. But I do like Oliver's retort. Uh, the other thing I wasn't really big fan of is Felicity's uh, desire to have a code name. Everybody has a code name. You know, you have Black Canary. You have Red Arrow uh, or Speedy, whatever the hell she wants to be called. Um, you have Green Arrow. You got Dignito. You know, that's not his real name, but that's what I'm going to call him. He's Dignito. But she doesn't have a name. I, I just... I, I did not care for that scene. I, I know it was funny. I, I, can, I can admire that it was a funny line. And it was meant to be a funny line. I can understand that. But this is all I'm going to say. She wants a code name. How about this? How about get shot by the Joker, be paralyzed from the waist down, and call yourself Oracle? How about that? Because that's basically what you're trying, that's basically what you want, don't you? That's what all the fans want, don't you? So how about that? How about she becomes Oracle, she gets shot by the Joker. Bring on the Joker, fuck it, why not? Just bring him in, just shoot her ass in the back. She's Oracle, wheels. Call her fucking wheels, she's Oracle. I don't know, I, I, I know I kind of sound overly angered by that kind of statement, but it's kind of true. I mean, she wants a codename, and at first I thought, like, yeah, fuck it, who cares? Call her whatever, I don't know. What could she be called? I don't really care, but whatever. But then everybody's like, oh, she's going to become Oracle. Fuck, no, I don't want to see that. I don't really... There's only one Oracle out there, and it's Babs. It's not Felicity. Felicity is an awesome character, and I love her, and I love the actress who plays her. She's fucking gorgeous. She's amazing. She has great presence on screen, but she's not Oracle. There's only one Oracle, and now that there's the introduction of 52 universes out there, there is an or there has to be an Oracle in one of them, or at least some of them, so why even try to play with that kind of shit? I just she's great as Felicity Smoke. She doesn't need to be. She doesn't have to take the limelight from another great character. That's just my problem with it. Let me know what you personally think about it. I know that probably won't go anywhere, but I'm just saying if they like introduce that plot device again in a future episode where it's like I need a code name. It's like how about fucking you know computer wizard? How about that or some sh said shit? I don't know. Fucking I don't know. I really don't know. <sighs> You're not Oracle. Please stop trying to become Oracle. You're not Oracle. I know you're, you know, the creators made you feel like freaking Oracle, but you're not. So please stop because it's starting to hurt my soul. But that being said, uh, other really, very interesting things. We got Mr. Terrific showing up. Awesome. Not really much I can say about him. I think he was cool. I thought he was, he was very slick. I liked his feedback with Felicity, his dialogue with her. Very interesting stuff. It's going to be very interesting to see how he transitions into Teen Green Arrow. But overall, uh, that's pretty much all I can say. I liked his character. I think it was a good introduction. Uh, Damien Dark, always a pleasure. Fuck the, the, the fucking air. The actor, Neil, so fucking good. He's such a great actor and he plays it so well, being the main bad guy of this show. It's just a pleasure to see him go to work. I loved his dialogue with Anarchy. I loved how when Anarchy like grabbed him, he was like, get your fucking arm off of me. What do you think you're doing? I'm like, fuck, yes. I need a villain like that where he's just like, you don't want to do this shit, kid. Get the f fuck off before he fucking sucks the life force out of you or some said shit. Whatever his powers, his mystical powers are. Fuck yeah. He's awesome. Badass. Anarchy also. Pretty cool character. Can't wait to... I hope he gets his costume. I really do. I don't know if he is. Uh, it kind of hit uh, At the end of the episode, it kind of hints at the idea that maybe he'll get his costume based off the idea that his entire body was burned because of Thea. But um, still, pretty cool stuff to hear from that. God, just just a very decent episode. I liked it a lot. I, I personally, there were a few things I didn't like. The Captain Lance stuff, I kind of was whatever for. Um, the Thea stuff leading up to, to the fucking spa thing, I wasn't a big fan of. Um, also, isn't it kind of weird how... Team Green Arrow gets away with crime finding during the day without their costumes. Isn't it kind of... I want to know. 
I want to know other people's, all the viewers out there, I want and all the fans. I want to know your personal thoughts on that. Is it odd how Oliver and Thea can get away in a in a very very public setting and doing superhero acts without being called out as Green Arrow or fucking Speedy? Doesn't it bother anybody? I want to know because it's like, okay. You know, there's, like, that one scene where he's, like, trying to save, like, the, the candidate mayor, you know, the Miss fucking Fairhorth or whatever her name is. Like, they're trying to, he's trying to save her and he does his thing and he's, like, she's, like, well, how'd you do this? It's, like, oh, I took a karate class, or some said, some cheesy CW line that he said. And I, w I just thought, like, that's too impressive of a move for any random douche to know. So, how is it possible, like, you know, because we all know Stephen Amell, he loves his parkour shit, so... Granted, but come on, you know, I, I doubt a lot of Star City people know how to do these kind of moves, if, especially if you're just like a regular dude of like high society, uh, high socialite, if you will. And also you got the Thea thing where it's like she's wearing a red blazer the entire time in this freaking episode and she's doing her thing too. I'll get the machine. I'll get the machine gun. There's no ghosts. How do you know these names? How do you know anything? Why are you being so obvious that the fact that you're a superhero character, it's it just... It's very, very odd. It's it's almost like Power Ranger odd, where it's just like, I know you're that guy because you're wearing the color of the same person that is the color of that character. I know you, it's kind of like the last season where like Lance found out that Roy was, was uh, Red Arrow, Arsenal rather, where it's like, I know, like, dude, I know it's you. It's like... How does not anybody know? It's like, hell, freaking Oliver made an idiotic video, like, pretty much showing his entire face to the entire city. It's like, how does not anybody know that's freaking Oliver Queen? Like, how is it possible? I mean, granted, he has a mask, but the mask only covers this section, and everything else is very visible. You know? It's like, it's one thing to do that if he was, like, in the shadows. I think that would have been a better, uh, better video quality to go with, but... Wow, it's just like, how does not anybody know? It's like, Oliver, how can you do these things? <gasps> You're the arrow! It's like, it's like, you know, fucking Thea. What's with the red? Oh, your fucking speed. It's like, come on, an idiot fucking man-child could figure this out, which is me. So I freaking figured it out, so come on. I'm just saying, it's just weird. It's, it's almost like they're going for like a Power Ranger things where it's like, let's just suspend disbelief that not anybody in this freaking stupid city can really figure out that this character is that character. It's kind of like the Metropolis thing all over again. It's like, how does not everybody know that Superman is Clark Kent? They look the fucking same. The only difference is the classes. It's like, it's all about the character, you know? I don't know. It's it's a it's a real huge debacle. It's it's a superhero trope, so it's not really that big of a deal. But I just felt I just felt that whole scene was just weird. It's just like, how does not anybody know in this city? Does does anybody have like the foresight just to be like, like, dude, I know you're the Green Arrow. You know, I know. It, I don't know. That's just my little problem with it. Not a big problem. It's just a. It's more or less a nitpicky kind of kind of problem. But overall, episode was pretty decent. Pretty much on par with last week's episode. I think both episodes worked well with each other. I think they're great. Flashbacks, awesome. Not really. Don't really understand anything that's going on in them. And I don't really care. At least as long as we're on the island, I give two shits. They can fucking be. Showing off Teletubbies over at the fucking island. I give two shits. At least you're on the fucking island. I'm happy. So, kudos to them. But great episode. Pretty good episode. I liked it. It was pretty decent. So, I'm going to give it a good 6.5 out of 10. It was a good, average, decent episode. Very watchable. Very entertaining. I liked the Thea Oliver moments. Uh, I liked the fight between Anarchy and... I liked Anarchy's character. I loved freaking, you know, Damien Dark's, you know, moments. I liked the, the scenes where he's, like, you know, talking to Lance and, like, you know, fucking telling him it's, like, next time you come back, come with a better tone, you know, or you know what's going to happen, you little fuck. I love those moments. He didn't actually, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but freaking awesome moments. Also, the big cliffhanger, which is Sarah's going to come back, obviously. Fucking awesome. I mean, I fucking thought it was a terrible decision to kill her off last season, but they're bringing her back, fucking awesome, uh, Thea and, and Laurel are gonna be taking Sarah's corpse over to, and, and kudos to CW for going that, that far with it, because I really thought they were gonna show the body, but they showed the body, and it was pretty badass, I mean, granted, they didn't go, like, all Walking Dead style and make her look like a walker and shit, because, you know, it's the CW, they can't get that dark, but, um, 
freaking kudos for them to, to, to come up with a really crappy, disgusting version of, like, Katie Lott's fucking body. It's like, fucking kudos to them for doing that. And the fact that, th that she's coming back, I say, fuck yes. I love that idea. Obviously, we knew she was going to come back due to Legends of Tomorrow. So, fucking kudos for them. I don't know how it's going to work out perfectly yet. Uh, because, if I'm not mistaken, the Lazarus Pit does have some issues with it where... You know, it depends on how long a certain character has been dead before you can resurrect it. So, I guess that's where John Constantine comes in, because we already know he's coming into the show. So, yeah, fucking great things to look forward to with Arrow Season 4 that I can't wait for. Mostly the Sarah thing. I, I can't wait to see where the Sarah thing goes on. I'm really interested in that. Um, and I'm also very interested to see how, like, Oliver and Thea's relationship are going to grow from here. Um, and also how Dignito... And Oliver's relationship is going to go from here. From next, from what can I grasp from next week's episode that they're obviously going to have issues with each other. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens with that. He obviously, uh, Diggle is obviously hiding things from him because he's, you know, trying to deal with this hive thing on his own. So it's going to be very interesting. I, I definitely, I'm very intrigued. I'm very intrigued. I'm not ex overly hyped. Uh, for the remainder of this season, but I'm very intrigued, and I can't wait to see what happens, but overall, let me know what your personal thoughts are in the comment section below, what did you think about this episode, did you love it, did you hate it, what are your personal thoughts on it, uh, what are your personal expectations, who's in the grave, who's in the grave, you know, how is Sarah going to come back, you know, what what is the future of the Arrowverse with, Zer with Sarah coming back, you know, and like, how is every character going to react when she does come back, that's the big thing, so, uh, and also, Oliver, you know, he's going to run for mayor, Green Arrow from Air. Interesting stuff. Very, very interesting stuff. But let me know what you personally thought about it in the comments section below. Of course, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at 12 Subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And this has been Josh12.